Hungary is a country steeped in history, boasting stunning architecture and ornate thermal spas. At the crossroads of Central and Eastern Europe, it's a place few British antique dealers visit. So for Drew and T, it's a new and exciting prospect. Look at that freeze above that. Look at the doors. Look, look, look at those doors. It's every single one's right. got really ornate door handles as well. The boys' adventure begins in beautiful Budapest. It's amazing, isn't it? That is unbelievable. That has to be one of the most dramatic cities in the world. So is this Buddha? This, we're in Buddha. Buddha, and that's Pest. That's Pest, but unfortunately we brought a pest into Buddha. <laughs> they have a busy trip ahead of them, visiting the country's biggest antique market before heading down to the Romanian border, where Drew's lined up visits to some off-the-beaten-track dealers. Hungary, I think, is a road less travelled by an awful lot of UK dealers. So I do think the opportunity in such a, a well-placed country in Europe for us to buy with such an interesting history, we're going to find something good. It's getting harder to find good industrial furniture in the UK. Now, I know that they're still stripping factories down here. Soviet, communist era factories, right? That is a rich hunting ground for me. I'm looking for a lot of stuff from the communist era that they had here. Statuary, period lighting, decoration, folk art, it just goes on. The next morning, the boys are keen to crack on with their Hungarian road trip. As usual, T's in charge of sorting their wheels, and he's found a local favourite that will help them fit right in. At last, something fit for purpose. That's one of my favourite all-time cars. Lada Lada Niva. Niva. Yeah. Oh, you've hit the nail right on the head now. It's cracking, isn't it? I love these things. Always wanted one. Right then, let's hit the road. This is excellent. You've done well. So now we've got a larder. Are we larder louts? Yay. We are now technically living La Vida Riva Nava. Oh, <laughs> It's a short eight-mile drive to their first destination, a huge antique flea market that's top of Drew's Budapest bucket list. Now, this is a market I am looking forward to. One of my favourite things to do in any city. And I do you know what, right? It should be put on, you know, like, things to do. Yeah. Number one, wherever you are in the world, go to a flea market. Etchery Market dates back to the early 1800s and moved to its current site outside Budapest in the 1960s. It's a true antique flea market, offering everything from communist-era curios to works of art and sculpture. The only problem facing the boys is getting their heads around the complicated local currency. So it's the foreign over here, obviously. The what? The foreign. The but they, foreign. Do, they do take the euro as well, though. So I don't know if you know the exchange rate. A pound, I think, is 370. So 100 pounds is... I brought me a little what? pad. <laughs> Where did you get that from? Pocket calculator. You can calculate how many pockets you got on it. <laughs> Even you can't break that. <laughs> like that. You can use your chin on that. Who knows like that? Early on Saturday mornings, dealers from across Hungary descend on the market, ready to sell their eclectic wares. So Drew and T waste no time diving in. There's a lot going on here. There you go, Drew. Oh, you're joking. Who's inside it? <laughs> Who's inside Gorbachev? Wow, oh, what's his name? Brezhnev. <laughs> Russian, Russian leaders, Russian doll. <laughs> We've just arrived at Budapest Flea Market. Why does this excite me so much? I just love it. It's that expectancy, I suppose. If you don't know what you're going to get, I'm just cannot wait. I love it. Look at that. That's fantastic. That's really so lovely. A rifle in his hands, yeah. Holding a rifle. There's one thing that just grabs me immediately, and it's this very enigmatic young boy stood upright holding a rifle and a, and a, and a beret or cap of, of military use something. It's just good, and it has a feeling. This oil on canvas portrait of a boy soldier is dated 1918. At the time, Hungarian cadet soldiers fought in battles against foreign armies. So this poignant painting has historic and artistic appeal and could be worth around £1,200. If you're looking for something different, something that changes a mood, that something that is needlessly stylish and fabulous without ever trying to be, this is it. The price, this? 
Corint. What's that? <laughs> 270 pounds. Two, 270 pounds? Yeah. T sorting out the currency conversions, it's a little complex. It's a little bit complicated, the prices, but we're getting there. There's the international language of, I want to sell it, you want to buy it. 70 quid, yeah, it's about yeah, 300 yeah. euros. Yeah. 300 euros? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. No rush to sell that. Good thing. Very decorative. Very different. Sets the mood. You know, a place in time. This is like heaven on earth. This is the best ever. He's mine. It's yours? Mine. Yours? Yeah. How, how much? For you? Yeah. Yes. French price, 200 euro. How much? 200 euro. And these here? Uh, halabala. Yes. Yindri halabala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. You know your stuff. You're looking for some new furniture for the house, Drew? I wonder if I like this. <laughs> I did try not to do it, but I couldn't resist it. The little set of chairs looks like toy furniture, doesn't it? The piece is made by a firm and a man, and his surname was Halabala, right? And you'll see his furniture everywhere. These small-scale models are examples of the H-series chair and sofa set created by Hendrik Halabala, a Czech who pioneered modernist furniture in the 1930s. Today, his furniture is sought after by design devotees, and these models could be worth around £500. This, I think, is his salesman's pack. The salesman would go round, right, in his car, and he'd get to the shop and he'd go, these are our sofas, this is our chair, this is our table. They're rare and they're valuable. How much? 140. 140, 150, 250. Uh, 200 he was asking for. That. 200, you got 150, 200. 300? 340. Thank you. Thanks. These have original upholstery. They're exactly the right one. And this is the, the kicker with these things, right? The model of furniture that they have, those as originals now are extremely rare, very valuable, and highly sought after. This place is worth a look. Real antique. There you go. He's got good things, this guy. What a... What on earth is that about? Does it... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Price? 400 euros. I see one place and thought, and it says real antique outside. Well, he ain't wrong. We walk in there and it's just quality and quantity. Tons of it everywhere. I can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> it's one of the it's a crazy strangest thing. things I've ever seen. I love it. I can't pay that for it, though. The guy behind the counter has absolutely no English. I have an equal level of Hungarian. It's frustrating. I want to talk to him. I was like, mate, how did you amass this knowledge to buy all of these wonderful things? Just everywhere is beautiful things. Look. Look at that. What's it for? Cigarettes? Cigarettes? Cigarettica. Cigarettica. OK. God, they're brilliant, aren't they? There's some boxes. I can't stop looking at these. The cigarette boxes for the table. You'd have them in your, your lands or whatever with your cigarettes in. They're beautiful. Genuinely beautiful. They're like little jewels. These cigarette boxes were made from cast bronze and feature panels with designs in relief. Made in the 1960s, they were given as gifts to government officials and as decorative items. They could be worth around £150 each. What sort of price are they? It's a 100 euro. 100 euro? Eight. Four? 300 euro? Antique expert Drew Pritchard is on an ambitious buying trip to Hungary. That is unbelievable. That has to be one of the most dramatic cities in the world. Searching out the country's finest antique and vintage items. This is like heaven on earth. At a huge flea market near Budapest, he's bidding hard on a desirable collection of communist-era cigarette boxes. What sort of price are they? It's uh, 100 euro. 100 euro? Eight. Four? 300 euro? OK. Yeah? Thank you. I get them for 300 for the four. I couldn't be happier. I think they're genuinely beautiful. He may have some great buys in the bag, but with large parts of the market still to search, Drew's hunt continues. Yeah, see, look at this. God, busy. <gasps> this, this place is exactly 
what we were looking for. This is all Soviet era, isn't it, mostly? There's an awful lot of units here, a, a few hundred, I think. One of them's got loads of industrial lighting and lots and lots of sort of um, uh, Soviet-era doodads lying all over it. Bang on. This is exactly what we're looking for. T, look. Wow. Could we, could we have a look at these? Of course. Can, can we get them down? This one? The rockets. The rockets. OK. Beautiful. How much? What's the price? Uh, 150 euro. The most interesting thing I think see straight away is these wonderful, well, the missiles. It's a missile launcher desk toy. And I just think that's great. Can we see, see the big jet there? Yeah. Can we have that down? So I'm pulling all these things down. They've got all the different jets. One of them is a, is a MiG fighter, and it's doing that. It's sort of going up, and then it's twisted, and it's just starting to, to move like... And it's just, it's just good. These desktop models of a rocket launcher and MiG fighter plane are made from aluminium and date from the 1960s or 70s. Desirable to both military collectors and man cave dwellers, they could be worth around £300 each. This one and this one, 250 280 I think that's the mid range. Okay, deal. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's just got a great movement to it, hasn't it? It's like going whoosh. 280 euros for the pair. Boom! Literally, <laughs> with the uh, missile one. The missile one's amazing, isn't it? You know, it's just one of those great things. Even the base of it's cool. See? What's that? Look. Can't see me. <laughs> it's gone. Low vis. Look at that. Donkey-eared glasses. Seen these here. I'm looking over trenches. Round the corner from the jackets, there's something I've bought before. And what I was then known as, I think, is donkey-ear trench binoculars. Right? So they splay out like donkey ears, right? And then you look through those like that, and the mirror goes up, and it goes up there and up there, so you can look over the top of a wall or a trench. This set of periscope rangefinders are dated 1950. Also known as donkey ears, they were designed to allow observation of enemy lines from a trench. Mounted on a tripod, these military-grade binoculars could be worth around £700. The price on those ones? 350 euro. 300? And 30. 300, we'll have a deal. Yeah? Okay. 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 Thank you, mate. Thanks, Thanks. Mom. Cool. We get it for 300 euros. A gift. I sold one about three years ago for about 750 quid, so we're in the money with that one. Big time. Today at Esprit Market, I couldn't be happier. Buy of the day. It's either the young lad with the rifle or it's the cigarette boxes. And you know what? I can't decide. Really interesting. A lot of it is exactly the sort of sort of Eastern Bloc Soviet stuff I was looking for. Great prices, nice people, and we're off to the next one. After a hard day at the flea market, the boys decide to go up market for some well-earned refreshment, Grand Budapest style. This is very refined. It's nice, isn't it? It's I right. thought I'd find us somewhere low-key. So at Eskri Market, what do you reckon? Oh, excellent. Yeah, good luck. Amazing, it? yeah. Well, I think if that's um, how the buying's going to be, for that sort of money, mm -hmm. that's unbelievable. Excellent. Well, I would say Budapest has been utterly fabulous. Amazing. And I'm looking forward to getting to the countryside, so here's to it. Lovely. Enjoy.
There you go, Drew. Oh, you're joking. Who's inside it? <laughs> Who's inside Gorbachev? Oh, what's his name? Brezhnev. <laughs> Russian, Russian leaders, Russian doll. <laughs> We've just arrived at Budapest Flea Market. Why does this excite me so much? I just love it. It's that expectancy, I suppose, if you don't know what you're going to get. I'm just cannot wait. I love it. Look at that. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's really so lovely. A rifle in his hand, yeah. Holding a rifle. There's one thing that just grabs me immediately, and it's this very enigmatic young boy stood upright holding a rifle and a, and a, and a beret or cap of, of military use something. It's just good, and it has a feeling. This oil-on-canvas portrait of a boy soldier is dated 1918. At the time, Hungarian cadet soldiers fought in battles against foreign armies. So this poignant painting has historic and artistic appeal and could be worth around £1,200. If you're looking for something different, something that changes a mood, that something that is needlessly stylish and fabulous without ever trying to be, this is it. The price, this? 14th. What's that? <laughs> 270 pounds. Two, 270 pounds? Yeah. T sorting out the currency conversions, it's a little complex. It's a little bit complicated, the prices.